we're about to turbo the engine in this car, and as part of that, we'll have to go about fitting an oil return to the sump. If you're planning on doing similar to a car like ours, then there are various methods for this, but it's quite common to drill or punch a hole in the oil pan, then tap, weld, or otherwise fit a bung in. This isn't such a big concern if you're working on something where the sump can be easily removed, but what if, like in this car, you have to come damn near close to removing the whole engine just to get the sump out? No one wants to do that just for an oil drain, but if you drill into the sump while it's on the car, surely you'll fill your oil with metal, send it through the motor, and need to pull it out to rebuild shortly after as punishment for your laziness, right? That's what we'll be testing and hoping to answer for good today by looking at what happens when we do this from inside the pan. Then I'll probably be ignoring any negative results and just doing it on the car anyway, because I am that lazy guy. But at least I'll know whether to be concerned or not. Hope you enjoy. Hey guys and welcome back into Brownie's Garage. If you're new to the channel, this video is part of our series where I'll be turboing the NA Barra in my BA Falcon. If that sounds like something you'd like to see more of, or you want to support the channel, then please consider subscribing and checking out our playlist for this series. As mentioned up top, today we'll be testing whether you really should drill into your oil pan or sump to fit a spot for a turbo oil drain. I want to take this chance to note that, of course, if you have the opportunity to do this off the car without causing yourself too much more work, then you should. Some of the other methods we'll discuss today will have mixed experiences from people regarding whether they'll leak or not, so please feel free to share your experience for any of this down in the comments so we can all learn together. But I think they all have their place and likely could work well when done properly and in the right scenario. What we want to test today though is whether these methods could push metal shavings into your oil and cause issues down the road. Let's move over to the bench and look at the two sumps we'll be testing on today and how I plan to do this. Here we have two different sumps to represent what I believe to be the two most common sump designs that will be out there, especially without going to something aftermarket. The first sump or pan that we have fitted to the frame here is a stamp steel unit. These seem to be more common on older cars. Now being stamped steel, it's possible for any backyard hack with a MIG welder to weld to this, but they are fairly thin and it may warp when you do this. And of course, there's all the dangers of welding around things that have the potential to go boom or start a nice big fire. Because of them being so thin, it may also not be possible to drill and tap a thread into it, but we'll give it a go as part of today's testing. It seems more common when leaving this pan on the car to drill a size that your fitting will only just fit into, and then use some metal epoxy or cold weld around the outside to seal it and help hold it in place. People have also worked around this fin wall issue by using a small punch to make a hole, then increasing the size of this hole with larger punches until it suits the thread that you want to tap. Sounds a little crazy, but this has actually been a recommended method by large manufacturers like Vortex Superchargers on some of their kits for years. And that folded in metal gives more material for a thread to be tapped to. This particular pan was once in our Ford ED Fairmont that we'll be working on in a future build and is from its old single overhead cam six cylinder engine that you could think of, I guess, as the father or grandfather of our next example. Here we have a cast alloy pan like you'd find on most new or more recent cars. This one is off a six cylinder barra from a BA Falcon, very similar to ours, and so is a perfect test for what we need to do shortly to our one. We are fortunate on these sumps that the casting still has the drain location from factory turbo models on the other side, 
but it is sealed and still needs to be drilled. I'll be doing that later after our other tests, but I'll be sure to show that in our next video when I'm doing it for real on the car. Instead, today I'll be testing on an area that doesn't already have this to better reflect what most of you will deal with in other cars, but I don't expect the results to really be any different. These will be thicker, but the material will make it more difficult and a little more specialized to weld to. It should generally be doable if needed though. That extra thickness should make it a pretty good candidate to drill and tap. Just be mindful that the material is a bit softer than steel and more prone to stripping threads out if you over torque your fittings. Oh, and I shouldn't have to say this, but it is the internet after all. Don't even think about the punch method with this one unless you wanna be picking up chunks off the floor. So that's a few methods we'll be using, but how will we test this? Well, we're pretty high budget around here as you can tell. So this is what I'll be using. Yep, a regular old plastic cup and some clear sticky tape. Now, before you judge, I was thinking of using a leftover takeaway container, but it turns out my Thai green curry made it much less transparent. So this is actually a step above what I could have done. We'll use these to seal off the backside and catch any shavings while letting us see a little of what is happening. And because your engine at home hopefully doesn't have one of these rattling about in the pan, if we do catch any shavings, we can then move on to stage two of testing by looking at flushing it out with oil. Let's get started on testing in the steel pan first. Quick interruption on the topic of budgets. If you like what we're doing here and want to help us do more, then feel free to check out our merch site at browniesgarage.com. Don't worry, I'll always be tight and get jobs done in a backyard hack fashion. I'm just trying to do more of what I enjoy and hopefully bring you guys along for the ride and a laugh along the way. Before we drill or punch any holes, I've gone ahead and wire wheeled off any layers of paint to make sure we're not pushing or flaking any of this into the sump and center punch to mark where I'll be working. The drill bit and tap we'll be using today are brand new and are 14.5mm and 3.8 NPT. The thinking being that the 3.8 NPT fittings are easy to come by for the tapped hole and should be large enough for most turbo installs. Anytime a drill bit or tap is used today, they'll be packed with grease to catch the debris and I'll be changing the grease frequently while doing this. Moving on to the punch and tap method, I started with a small tap to punch a hole. When that bent, I went to a nail instead, then moved through the common punch sizes I have before having to get a little creative by using a step drill bit and some sockets. I've seen steel plumb bobs, larger punches, or homemade punches used for this, any of which likely would have worked better. This was a bit of a struggle. It was about now I realised my tap handle didn't go to a large enough size. Adjustable wrench it is then. After a change of cut, the folded edge and pushed in section of steel now help to give some area to get a thread going. Before we look at the results for those closer, let's knock out the alloy sump as well. A nice thick section high up is picked for this and drilled, having plenty of patience to keep changing the grease. Okay, okay, let's pause it there. I don't normally do this, but I'm editing this video a few days later, saw the clip you've just seen, and I wasn't happy to leave it there. So I went back out to try again with a slower drill speed. Uh, I taped the drill bit so it couldn't go so far through and made sure a heap of grease was used with a lot of brakes to clean it. And thankfully, the results were a lot better. There was one medium and one small sized piece that was caught in our grease, but fell in along with a very small amount of some fine material. Further testing from here was filmed earlier before I re-ran this test. And so it's based on results with a lot more debris and is a look at more of a worst case scenario from the drilling. I think it's still fair, but to be honest, I am quite relieved it can be done a lot cleaner. We pick it up now just after drilling with tapping the alloy sump. Better late than never, I remember the tap fits in a 13mm socket, so I was out with the adjustable wrench. 
The tap we're using, being NPT, leaves a tapered thread and when used with a correct fitting and sealant should help make a good seal. Just don't over tighten it. And there's some threads ready for a fitting. Nice. Or was it? Let's take a look at the results. Each of these is exactly as it was left by the individual method used. The only extra I've done is to reach a pinky in the hole from the outside to see if there are any loose bits that were ready to fall off, just as you would be able to do if this was on the car. The drill in steel left maybe two little spots of debris in there. As suspected, the pen wasn't thick enough to tap though with this method. The punch and tap method left uh, some very small fine debris as well, but I'd say some of this was from the various punches used. The large flaked off bit that we got when tapping the thread, maybe because the hole we made wasn't quite to size, but most people won't exactly approach this with precision, so I don't think it's a completely invalid result. That's all that fell from tapping in the steel, so not a bad result for any of the steel really. Then onto the alloy sump. Well, the good news is tapping the thread in this was really successful and this part may have only added one or two tiny pieces, if that. Drilling it on the other hand, the part most important to me, has left more debris than I would have hoped for to be honest. It's not catastrophic or anything. None of these pieces are huge uh, and they're wouldn't be enough to block any normal oil pickup screen, I'd say. Now, at this stage, some of you are probably a little concerned, but we haven't done one step to try and remedy this, and it's something that I'm sure most would do anyway when doing this. That is, to give a flush through with some El Cheapo oil without running the engine. This part is incredibly difficult to test, even more so when I'm trying to make this so it can apply to a huge range of engines. There's just so many factors that will differ from car to car with all varieties of baffling and windage trays. And this can even vary on the same engine if you drill in a different location, as you can see in our steel one here. Add to that that the oil poured into the fill hole of an engine that isn't running, as you would if you're doing this on an assembled engine in the car, will have completely different paths and locations that it drowns, drains down through that engine and so different locations it will eventually drain back into the sump as well. In summary, this is now way beyond a backyard hack like me's pay grade. So I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to combine the metal debris from all of our tests today and deposit it directly below where we drilled and tapped our hole in the alloy sump. So it would be as if it missed any windage tray like we have in our stamped steel version. I'm comfortable doing this because to me, the aim of any tray would normally be to move the oil away and back into the lower section of the sump. So the hope is that pouring in oil would move the debris with it if it did land somewhere like this. In the real world, for me, this means I would leave the oil in when drilling, drain and strain that before refilling and doing it again. If you were being really cautious, you could do this a few times as well as start the engine very briefly with good oil to have it pumped and returned over locations that it may not get to when the engine isn't running and then drain it once again. So let's make a mess doing our bench version of that test now. This is where the odd part of that testing frame pays off. I'll fill the pan to the amount of oil that would normally be recommended for service on a car with one of these sumps, being 6.5 litres, then dropping the debris in. The oil used here is clean and only the finest supermarket brand. This part felt very wrong to do. Drain plug is then removed and the oil is drained into a clean drain pan. Then, strained through a coffee filter, which was quickly replaced by an old kitchen sieve because it was taking far too long, whilst being poured back into the oil container to capture any of the metal we've flushed out and clean it to be reused. We've gone ahead and done another flush off camera with that same oil, and this is what's come out. One thing I did learn with the camera off is that tilting the pan back, as it would be for our car when the front only is raised, flushed a lot more out than at sitting level. Makes sense, but something to be mindful of. So, we've flushed some of the metal out of the pan, and what's left seems to be the bigger bits that have stayed 
pretty much put exactly where we dropped them. We might have been able to get more of this out with another flush or two as well though. So, we may have some debris in the pan still after all that, but is it really all bad news? Well, no, because of course we have oil filters and screens on our oil pickup that should catch these, especially the big stuff, before they cause any issues if they do move. And this amount of material isn't going to be blocking those up. I wouldn't think so anyway. At least you'll have a bit more info now to make a decision for yourself at home as to whether doing it on the car is suitable and how to try to reduce any risks like slowing down the drilling speed and taping the drill bit so it doesn't go further than necessary into the sump. I think with these we would have left a lot less in the pan and I'm sure some of you at home will have some other great ideas so be sure to check out the comments. In my research though, some much smarter people than me have said they are comfortable using these methods including Turbo Yoda aka Al from Skid Factory in an early appearance for Mighty Car Mods drilling and tapping a pan on car similar to this pan. So for me I'm happy now going ahead with it on the car which will be coming in our very next episode when we rip the NA gear off the car and get properly stuck into adding our turbo. If you want more proof that this won't kill your engine, keep watching. Or maybe you'll be right and you can tell me then. Oh, and I'm going to finish practicing now on this one for what we'll actually be doing on ours. So, if anyone out there wants a soon-to-be genuine turbo sump to suit a barrel, just let me know. Only one extra hole. Hopefully catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching and for all the support this series has got so far, the best is yet to come. Cheers guys.